Hello, in this video we are going to look at the features that XPRL Analyst provides for working with draft filings. We will go over how to load and view draft filings, how to check for calculation inconsistencies in the use of deprecated concepts, how to compare different versions of the same filing, and how to export the entire filing into Excel for detailed review. These features are designed to make the interactions between preparers, filers, and auditors more effective. Also, by providing the data in Excel, this should greatly simplify the work for non-XBRL savvy stakeholders in the filing process. To load a draft filing, we can use the XBRL Excel Converter tool. This will allow us to take an XBRL instance document, and optionally the HTML version of the filing, and embed it in an Excel file that XBRL Analyst can use to read the contents of the draft filing. All of this is done on the user's local computer. None of the filing data gets sent over the internet. So first we'll select an instance document. For the purposes of this video, we are going to use a filing that has already been filed to the SEC. But everything we see will work just as well with a filing that has not yet been submitted. So we select the instance document, leave the HTML field blank, set the version number to 1, and select where to output the resulting Excel file. Now, it takes XBRL Analyst about a minute to pre-process the filing, so we'll skip ahead to when it's done. Now that it's done, we can just click the Load in Excel button to have XBRL Analyst open the Excel file and read the XBRL data. When you want to open this instance again later, you don't have to embed it again. Just use the Open File XBRL Excel button. The first thing to notice after opening a draft filing is that, well, nothing's changed. What has happened is that XBRL Analyst has become aware of the filing, so we can access it using almost any of our usual tools. For instance, we can open up the Financial Explorer, find the filing company, and we'll be able to see the draft filing as part of that company's list of filings. The asterisk, or star here, indicates that this is a draft filing. We can open statements in the document viewer, drag values into the spreadsheet, and look at technical information like XBRL tags and period types. One extra feature that we get with draft filings is that we can add comments to the data. This tool is useful for collaborating on a filing and for keeping track of potential issues in the report. It's a great way for auditors and reviewers to communicate their feedback to an SEC reporting team for follow-up during the draft XBRL filing review process. These comments are saved with the Excel file and will still be here if we close the file and open it again later. One thing XBRL Analyst lets us do is quickly track down errors with the filing. You can see in the error column that there are a few issues with this draft that are not in the actual filing. We've edited this instance to introduce some errors for example's sake. The first thing to notice is that there's a red inequality sign superimposed on the calculator icon in the list of statements. This means that there is an inconsistency in the calculation link base for this statement. If we open it and click the calculator toggle, we can see that there are issues with both operating income and gross margin. By clicking the Values button while the calculator toggle is on, we can export the statement into the spreadsheet with calculation link base information. When we do this, we can see that operating income is the sum of gross margin and total operating expenses, and that total operating expenses seems to be fine. That means the problem is probably with gross margin. In fact, the value for gross margin is an error that has been introduced into this filing. The 7 here was replaced with a 5 in the instance. Back in the document viewer, there are two cells that are highlighted red. The first is the number of basic shares here, which is highlighted because of its precision. By hovering over the cell, we see that it has decimals set to minus 3, which means that the value is precise up to thousands. However, the value has been reported with precision down to a single share. XBRL Analyst notices discrepancies like this and highlights them so that they can be tracked down and reviewed. The other highlighted cell is indicating the use of a deprecated concept. If we look at the tag and the taxonomy version, 
This concept here has been deprecated in the 2014 version of the U.S. GAAP taxonomy, so it is highlighted as a potential problem. This concept doesn't really mean anything here. It's an arbitrary deprecated concept that we put in the income statement, just for an example. Let's quickly add some comments here to remember to look into these issues later. After finding errors and adding comments to the filing, we can export the entire filing into Excel. This allows anyone to see the filing and comments for review and follow-up, even if they don't use XBRL Analyst. To export the filing, click the Export button. This will open a dialog that allows you to select which part of the report you want to export. If, for instance, you didn't want to export the comments you made, you could simply uncheck the Audit Comments checkbox. A common choice would be to omit the HTML notes, as they take more time to export. There are a few different options for exporting HTML content that we should review before exporting this report. By going to Additional Settings, we can change the HTML output format here. Embed Word will embed a Microsoft Word document into the spreadsheet that will show the HTML text block exactly. Web Browser works similarly, but embeds a web browser instead of a Word document. Note that this is not supported in Excel 2013. HTML Excel will approximate the HTML formatting using Excel without embedding anything, and plain text will strip off all formatting and just export the plain text. We will choose HTML Excel for this example. Now we can export the filing. We'll export everything except for the full HTML report, as we didn't include it when we embedded the XBRL instance earlier. Exporting takes a little time, so we'll skip to the end. The first worksheet is a summary page. It contains the list of statements and notes and a breakdown of the content and errors for each statement. We see the number of comments that we wrote, the number of concepts used, the number of extension concepts, the number of dimensional items that are rendered, the number of total labels used, the number of negated labels used, the number of monetary items, and the number of non-USD monetary items. Then there's some error reporting the number of deprecated concepts used, and the number of scale issues. Finally, some information about calculation relationships. The number of calculation relationships, the number of issues, and these issues are definitely problems. The number of warnings. The warnings may, in fact, be fine, but they are worth investigating. And the number of missing calculation relationships. This is where a total label is used, but there is no corresponding calculation relationship. Each of these statement titles are actually links, so if we click on one, we will be taken to the appropriate worksheet. Let's take a look at the income statement. It is basically the view that the document viewer gives us when we show all of the comments. Note that the concept documentation is present in the comment for each tag, and that the comments that we made earlier are also included. The other thing that XBRL Analyst exports is a list of all the comments added to the draft filing. Each comment comes with enough information to trace it back to its origin in the XBRL data. From this worksheet, we could go over all the issues flagged in the comments and update the filing accordingly. Let's say that we have a new version of the same instance that we made by fixing the errors we just saw. XBRL Analyst lets us view all the changes between two versions of the same filing. To do this, we need to embed the second version. This time we'll select the other version of the instance, set the version number to 2, select an output file with a different name, and embed the new version into an Excel file. Then we load this file in Excel alongside the other one. Now, if we go back to the list of reports, we'll find two draft filings. If we show the accession numbers of the reports, we can see the version numbers at the end. So we select version 2, and then click the Compare tab down here. It prompts us to select a reference report, which will be version 1. We then click Compare, and XBRL Analyst will find all the differences between the two reports, and generate a list of statements with differences here. We can click on the income statement, 
and it will show us the changes to the income statement between versions 1 and 2. For instance, here's gross margin in the reference report, as indicated by the minus, and in the new report, indicated by the plus. We can see that the 5 has been changed back to a 7. Similarly, the three missing zeros from basic number of shares has been restored, and our deprecated concept example has been removed. There's a second statement that has changes, which is just a disclosure in which basic number of shares is used. These comparisons can also be exported. If we select All and click Values, this will export the statement and include all of the change indicators. This has been an overview of the tools that XBRL Analyst offers for working with draft filings. Everything we saw here works with IFRS reports from Europe and Canada, too. For more information and to download a free trial, please visit us at findynamics.com. Thanks for watching.